used to cost a nickel And a bus ride only used to cost a dime Pass a look Them days can be forgotten The world has gotten rotten Lots of luck Lots of luck Lots of luck Every day is getting tougher And it keeps on getting rougher A dollar isn't even worth the half a buck Lots of luck. 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 So come on. All the lost stuff around here, you'd think there'd be a bottle opener. Oh, forget the bottle opener, will you please? Tell me about the roller derby. Hey. Yeah. I found this package on the number four bus. You want to take care of it? Oh, good. Hey, thanks for turning it in. You know something? It does my heart good to see a citizen do the right thing. Yeah, I always do the right thing. But uh, don't lose that, huh? Hey, this is the lost and found. If I lost it, I could find it. <laughs> okay, Bummy, tell me, tell me. The girls are in the ring, and... One of the girls on the other team throws a block on Bruiser Bufano. Bruiser Bufano? That's a girl? <laughs> Sounds like the name of a truck. <laughs> Believe me, she's a girl. Anyway, she comes crashing right through the guardrail, right into my lap. Uh, something always good falls in your lap. <laughs> and yours. She got a girlfriend for you. Yeah? From the roller derby? Yeah, Betty. Oh, Betty. Mm, at least that's a girl's name. <laughs> Betty the Bumper. <laughs> Betty the Bumper, the Bruiser the Bumper. Shh. What's the matter? Well, I mean, uh, I'm looking for a little action. I don't want no violence. <laughs> hey, excuse me, mister. Oh, yeah. Can I help you? Yeah, I lost the package on a buzz this morning. I was wondering maybe if it turn up. Oh, can you describe it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's about this big. Yeah? A white butcher paper and some white string and it got ink in the corner. Hey, that was just turned in a few minutes ago. No kidding. Yeah. It must be my lucky day, huh? Hey, you're not kidding. Here, you mind signing for that? Sure. Here you go. And thank you very much, Mr. Smith. Thanks a lot, pal. Hey, I'm glad we can help you out. So much. Yeah. Hey, that's weird, ain't it? What? One mug turns in a package. A couple of minutes later, another mug picks it up. You don't think that's kind of funny? Hey, a lot of funny things happen here. New York is fun city. <laughs> Speaking of fun, when is our date with the roller derby queens? Tuesday night. You got it. Tuesday, we tangle with the bruiser and the bumper. <laughs> And by Wednesday, I hope I'm a total wreck. Anybody want this last meatball? I don't want it, Ma. Me neither, Ma. Give it to the vacuum cleaner. <laughs> I'll get it. Oh, no, I wonder who that could be at dinner time. It's probably a care package for Arthur. <laughs> Uh, yeah. Stanley Belmont. I am if you ain't selling anything. Uh, <laughs> Lieutenant Milford, Police Department, Bureau of Narcotics. And narcotics? I don't even take aspirin. <laughs> this is no joke, uh, Mr. Belmont. Lieutenant Daniel Milford, Police Department. Police Department? Yeah. What does he want? He come to see if we got a license for you, Arthur. Yeah. <laughs> hey, excuse me, uh... Excuse me, this is confidential. Yeah, I know when I'm not wanted. Took you seven years to find out. Uh, you know, you look like that guy on uh, television, that Columba fella. Except your raincoat's clean. Stanley, what is it? Oh, um, uh, this guy is uh, selling encyclopedias, Ma. Oh, well, uh, please, don't buy nothing we don't need. Yeah, okay, uh, Ma, close the door, will you? Stanley, maybe I'd like an encyclopedia. Now, Olive, you don't even finish reading your cereal box. You sit down. Oh, thank you. I mean, tell me, I mean, what's all this about? Uh, uh, Mr. Belmont, we have reason to believe that the lost and found department of the bus company is going to be used as a drop for drugs. Oh, you're kidding. You mean they're using my place to, to pierce dope? No, no, not yet. No, they're going to try a couple of dry runs first. Oh. But that's why we'd like you to keep your eyes open. Keep my eyes open, Yeah, huh? for anything out of the ordinary. For anything out of the ordinary. You know, something where you say to yourself, hey, that's kind of suspicious. Oh, if I say something like, hey, that's kind of suspicious. <laughs> you want I should write it down for you? 
what if a guy leaves a package and a couple of minutes later, right away, another guy picks it up? And that would be suspicious. That happened today. Oh, this could be it. No kidding. Yeah, I'm going to give you my private number down at uh, police headquarters. Your private number, huh? Yeah, I I'm going to give you a code name for you to use. Code name? Wow. Yeah, and the minute this happens again, you call me. I'll huh? call you. I'll call you. You got it, Lieutenant. Oh, and uh, be sure and tell, what's his name? Uh, Arthur. Tell Arthur not to tell anybody that I was here. Don't worry about me. Arthur, you was listening. Yeah. Arthur, you're going to have to keep quiet about this. Oh, I won't say a word. But if you ask me, the real Columbo would have had this whole case wrapped up already. <laughs> telling you, Bummy, this thing that came in this morning, I mean, I think it's another one of them uh, packages. Hey, you ain't kidding me. You're really going to use the lost and found for a drug drop? Yes, yes, yes. Just like in that movie, uh, The French Connection. Yeah, with Dustin Hoffman. <laughs> Dustin Hoffman was not in the French Connection. Dustin Hoffman was in uh, The Midnight Cowboy. Midnight Cowboy? That was John Wayne. What is the difference? I mean, who cares about that? I'm talking about this. Don't, look, don't you see? There's a stain there, and it's red instead of black. See? Oh, yeah. Boy, you're really mixed up in this, ain't you? Uh, as a matter of fact, if the bus company didn't need me, I could be a detective. <laughs> That's right, because I notice things so much. Yeah. Yeah, like you, for instance. What about me? You was out late last night and you overslept. I did oversleep. You got up late and you skipped your shave. Yeah. You dressed in a hurry. How do you know that? Al Zippo. <laughs> Mingo. Uh, excuse me. May I help you? I think so. I hope so. Uh, I left a package on the number 10 bus this morning, and I was wondering if someone turned it in. Well, we got a few packages. Uh, what was it like? Well, it was about this big, and it had white paper on it and twine, and I had some fingernail polish on the corner. Oh, yeah. Is this here, Rit? Yes, that's the one. Oh, I Thank see. Thank you. Okay, listen, would you mind signing for that? Well, um, sure. Right here. Thank you, Miss Jones. Thank you. <laughs> Glad we could help you out. Okay. She, she's one of them, too. Yeah, I knew, I knew. I gotta call the lieutenant. I'm gonna make a description here. Uh, eyes, blue. Yeah. Uh, hair, blonde. Nay, hey, Charlie Chan, she's a brunette. Oh, okay, brunette. Uh, about 26. I'd say about 26. Uh, how big do you think she was? Oh, 38. Her height have other measurements, you know? Yeah, but first things first. <laughs> okay, I figure her height was 5'7". No, 5'9". Okay, we'll split the difference. 5'8". And I'd say she was a 36. Uh, 38, easy. 36. Split the difference, 37. I never heard of a 37. Okay, 37. The odd couple. All right. Now, I got to call the lieutenant with a uh, private number, of course. Oh, of course. Hello? Lieutenant Milford, please. Urgent. My code name? Tell him uh, it's the fat pussycat. <laughs> Oh, hi, Lieutenant. I've been waiting for you. I'm sorry I'm late. I was delayed at headquarters. Oh, about our case? No. Somebody let the air out of my tights. No kidding. Gee, you can't even call a cop. Okay, Mr. Butter, sit down. Here's the picture. Let me ask you a favor. Uh, sure, anything you want. Could you give me a new code name? <laughs> But we'll get you another one. Now, we have just received information that the drug drop will definitely be made tomorrow. I'm glad it's working out for you. Good luck. Oh, uh, yeah. uh Mr. Belmont, we're going to need a little more help from you. From me? Just ask me. Yeah. Well, tomorrow, you see, I would like to be at the Lost and Found when that uh, package is picked up. I knew it. I knew it. You're going to be behind the counter. No, I'll be in the back on the stakeout. Oh, oh, oh you, you'll be in the back. Yeah, there'll be another detective with me. Oh, and he'll be at the counter. No. No. They'd be outside. 
Oh, he'll be outside. You'll be in the back. Won't that look kind of funny with nobody at the counter? Well, uh, it sure would. That's why we need somebody there. I knew you'd think of everything. Who are you going to have at the counter? Oh, oh. Me? Me? Me will be at the counter? You can see the reason for that. I can't see the reason for that. I can see the reason for that. You was listening again, you jackass. Don't you understand? Confidential. You big banana head. But Arthur happens to be right. If somebody knew what the counter did, I guess suspicious they call off the whole operation. Right, Arthur? That's the way I see it. Who asked you? Some public spirit. What would happen if everybody just stuck their head in the sand? They would end up looking like you. Run out, will you? Arthur's right again. If the public don't cooperate, what are the police supposed to uh, do? Lieutenant, I mean, Lieutenant, suppose a guy picks up a package, right? He may have a gun. Oh, he'll have a gun. <laughs> oh, he'll have a gun. Yeah. Yeah, but we'll have guns, too. Oh, uh, you'll have a gun. He'll have a gun. I'll be the only one with no gun. Right, look, Mr. Belmont, every precaution will be taken. Every precaution. I mean, the place will be surrounded by special police carrying shotguns. Shotguns? Yeah, all, they'll be all in disguise. Disguise? Should it be part of the species? I mean, a, a guy delivering beer? A cop. A taxi cab driver on the corner? A cop. Like the two nuns, they're looking in a store window? Get out of here. Both cops. What about the guy running down the street? What guy? Me. I know you're nervous. Good. But now we both know. But you'll be happy to hear that your bus company, because of your cooperation, is going to increase your life insurance policy by five thousand dollars. Oh, that's terrific! For years, I'm fighting for a raise. I end up with funeral expenses. <laughs> Man, I really think you owe something to the city of New York. I'm just right again. Okay. I'll do it. You will? Yeah, I figure if Arthur is right three times in a row, I don't want to live anyway. <laughs> Strange. I wish that encyclopedia salesman would stop coming over. He's making Stanley real nervous. <laughs> yeah. I passed him in the hall and I said, good morning, Stanley. And he didn't seem to recognize who I was. <laughs> well, I keep saying we should get a brighter light bulb in that hall. <laughs> Ma, he didn't even look at me. Maybe he thought it was Arthur. And you know how he hates to see Arthur that early in the morning. <laughs> Good morning, Stanley. How are you? I'm fine, Ma. Now, sit down, sit down. Need your breakfast. Hi, kid. Breakfast? No, I'm not hungry, Ma. But I made your favorite scrambled eggs and sausages. No. Nah. No, thanks, Ma. Oh, well, that's all right. Don't worry, Stanley. Arthur will eat it. I'll eat it. I'll eat it. I don't want Arthur to get used to two breakfasts. Stanley, something's bothering you, ain't it? Nothing's bothering me, Ma. A mother can always tell. Now, I'm going to ask you straight out. Stanley, did some girl get you in trouble? <laughs> None of them even try. Then what is it, Stanley? You can tell us. I'm just nervous, that's all. Well, then eat your breakfast. You're going to come down with an ulcer. <laughs> I would settle for an ulcer. I got to go to work. Oh, all right. Now, don't forget your lunchbox. I made you something real nice today. A hero sandwich. Oh. <laughs> Mom. Mom, mom, mom. You're such a mom, mom, mom. Olive. Yeah. Olive. Take care of mom. Mom. Take care of Olive. Olive. 
Take care of Arthur. Stanley, you talking crazy. <laughs> yeah. Forget Arthur. <laughs> Some guy brought it in as soon as I opened up this morning. You know, this package could be worth a half a million bucks. Hey, now, here's the setup. I'll be hiding in a back storeroom, and when a guy comes in, you, you know, act casual, and just start eating this lunch that I brought for you. <laughs> Another hero sandwich? <laughs> Whatever happened to chicken salad? <laughs> I'm gonna eat it from this end. What's wrong with the other end? Now, there's a microphone in there. Oh. A microphone? Yeah, it's one of the mushrooms. Oh. What's this? A wire? Oh, no, that's an anchovy. I thought it was a wire. Oh. No, no, no. Now, it's wireless. See, I got, I got a tape recorder in my pocket here, Mr. Belmont. We're in this together. Call, call, me, call me Stan. Okay, Stan. Now, when the guy comes in, you hold up the sandwich and record him describing the package because we don't want him to say later that you gave him the wrong one. You got it? Okay, I got it. Uh, oh, wave it to me. In the back? Yeah, that's right. Where's the nuns with the shotguns? <laughs> don't worry, don't worry, Stan. The street is covered. Oh, there, one last thing. Yeah, after you get him on tape... Yeah. Just give him the package. Give him the package. And drop to the floor. <laughs> drop to the floor. Why? Well, to get out of the way. Of what? Could be possible gunfire. <laughs> what are you talking about? Possible gunfire? Well, I told you there'd be guns. No, all you said uh, you didn't take down here. Come on, Stan. No, don't call me Stan no more, okay? Get somebody else. Get somebody else. Just get somebody else. Milford. Got you right. What's that? He's on his way here. Oh, oh. You got no chance. <laughs> you play it cool, everything be okay. Now you panic, and we both got trouble. We. All of a sudden, I'm your partner. Now, now I'm going in the back. Now you relax, you know. Act casual, you know. You got it. Casual. <laughs> One, two, three, tasting. I lost on the bus. Oh. <laughs> Could you describe it? Yeah. It was uh, wrapped in brown paper, white fisherman's twine, and it had it. Talk a little louder, please. <laughs> I said, brown paper, white twine, and an instinct in the corner. All right? Okay. Okay. Did you state your name and address and the purpose of this visit? Hey, if you want to get it for me, I'll go in the back and get it myself. No, no, that's okay. Hey, if you pay attention to me and stop stuffing your face. <laughs> What's this? Uh, it's a mica mush. <laughs> The 
It's a mushroom mic. It's a microphone. Yeah, it's a mic. That's right. It's a mic. That's what it is. <laughs> All right, now, get the package and hurry it up. Lieutenant? Lieutenant. Okay, come on, Lieutenant. Come on out. And no funny stuff or chubby here gets it. No funny stuff or chubby here gets it. Come on. <laughs> All right, you, answer the phone and watch what you say. Hello? Answer it. <laughs> Come on. Lost and found Belmont speaking. Hello, Stanley, how are you? <laughs> fine, my fine. <laughs> Stanley, did you just burp? Uh, yeah, Ma, I'm, uh, I'm having a little stomach trouble. <laughs> well, that's what you'll get for going without your breakfast. What do you want, Mom? I'm busy. I just called to tell you you're not going without your lunch because I just sent it down to you. Oh, fine, Ma. Also, a girl called, some tramp by the name of Betty the Bumper. She says she can't go dancing with you tonight because she broke her leg. Oh, uh, that's okay. I'll probably see her later <laughs> at the hospital. Uh, Ma, I gotta say goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye, Stanley, and you'll take some bicarbonate. All right, now I'm getting out of here. We ain't going to get very far to place us around it. Oh, I'll get far, because I'm taking Chubby with me. Oh, listen, I can't leave because I don't have a coffee break. <laughs> Let's get out of here now, fast. You'll never get away with it. You'll never get away with it. Well, I'll get away with it. He says he'll get away with it. Arthur, stop it. you got to be kidding me with that old Go ahead, Arthur, do it now. Come on. I brought you your lunch. <laughs> as soon as I put this stuff away, Arthur, I am going to take you out to lunch to show my gratitude. You like that, Arthur? I like that. Uh, I know that you and I have had our differences, Arthur, but let me tell you something. When I needed you, I mean, when I really needed you, you were there. I'll never forget that. And I won't let you, Stan. <laughs> That's okay, Arthur. That's okay. You got a right. You showed a lot of courage before you fainted. <laughs> you think my uh, picture will be uh, on the late news? I don't know about that, Arthur, but uh, your stomach is going to be on the radio. Huh? You ate the sandwich with the microphone in it. Mother's Day, Antenna TV is giving moms a day off. Oh, what a wonderful idea. And bringing on a maid for a day, Hazel. She's just the best maid in the whole world. Oh, I ain't done nothing. So relax, take it easy, and watch someone else do the cooking, cleaning, and caring. You know, a mother works from sun to sun, but a housekeeper's work is never done. The Made for a Day Mother's Day Marathon, May 9th, starting at 5 Eastern, 2 Pacific, only on Antenna TV. Antenna TV. <laughs>